So there was a question earlier about what are these eigenvectors and eigenvalues mean in terms of geomechanics, in terms of things we're interested in related to the Earth. So let's look at a little piece of the Earth. Let's, let's pull out what I'm going to call a half space. So basically a, you know, a semi-infinite region of the Earth. Right? Let's, let's pull it out. We'll station a coordinate system on the Earth right at the surface. Something like that. Okay. So that's what we have here, okay? Now, we're typically, when we do geomechanics uh, in relation to either tectonic stresses or in petroleum engineering, we're, we're talking about equilibrium conditions. So usually the terms on the left-hand side are negligible. These are acceleration terms that, unless there's rapid acceleration, which could be, in, in, in terms of earthquake engineering, right near the earthquake, then, you know, right near the focal point of the earthquake or the fault, well, this can be relevant, right? But in terms of what we typically do um, in petroleum engineering, we're really not concerned that with this acceleration terms, and these are negligible, right? So we'll get rid of those guys. Now, the surface of the earth is in contact at a large scale, if we zoom out far enough, right? The surface of the Earth is in contact everywhere with a fluid, right? Either water or air. Can fluids at a very large kind of scale of the Earth, can fluids impart shear stresses? No. So in the nature of things being equili in an equilibrium, if the fluid if the shear stress in the fluid right at the contact surface of the Earth is zero, what's the shear stress on the Earth? Yeah, it's zero. There's no shear stress on the surface of the Earth. Right? Again, these are, these are engineering assumptions. Okay? And in, in, a, in a general sense, this is true. Uh, in the scale of things we're interested in, this is true. Okay? There could be, due to boundary layer effects and other things in areas of really high wind, a tiny, tiny amount of shear stress. It's not going to affect the motion of the plates. Right? It's just tiny, tiny things, okay? So for all practical purposes, at the surface of the Earth, there's zero shear stresses. Well, in the coordinate system that I've drawn, okay, this eliminates everything with a 1 or a 2 in it, right? Um, and, and also combined with the fact that there are no, in, in the way that I've drawn this, there are, no, there are also no normal stresses, okay? So what, you, what we end up with, also then let's look, we talk about body forces. We typically, the only one we concern ourselves with is gravity, right? So gravity acts in the x3 direction. So B3 is equal to G, okay? B1 and 2 are equal to 0, okay? And so what we end up with is this guy. And we can integrate from 0 to x3, and then we'll have integrate from 0 to x3. We'll basically have s3, 3 is equal to from 0 to x3 minus b. And I'll, I'll go ahead and write, say, g of x. Okay. So the point I'm really trying to make here is not what S33 is equal to. That'll come later. But 
the point is that at the surface, S33, we, we know its direction, right? There's no off-diagonal components of the stress tensor, so the S33 must be in the direction of X33, right? And so therefore, S33 is a principal direction. I'm sorry, S33 is a principal stress. And we know its direction is aligned with X3, which is the axis of the Earth. Okay? And so we know S33 is a principal stress. We typically call this the vertical stress, SV, in petroleum engineering. So we'll talk about SV, the vertical stress. What it's equal to is actually what I wrote on the, on the right-hand side. Well, this is what it's equal to in, in the Earth. There would also there'd be additional sort of overburden or head pressure associated with water if, if it was under the ocean, right? But, but under the continents, the magnitude of the vertical stress is this thing. And it's actually, we'll talk a little bit more about it in the future, but it's, it's actually pretty easy to estimate what it is because in most, most places it's about one PSI per foot of depth. So that's the overburden pressure. Okay. But, so S33 is the vertical stress. It must be a principal stress. We know its direction. Okay, so that's the principal direction. And so, if we know one, one principal direction, the other two must be in the plane of the surface of the Earth, right? And while this is obvious at or near the surface, right, because the, princi the principal directions are orthogonal, right? They're orth orthogonal. If I know one of them is pointing into the Earth, then the other two must be in a plane right at the surface, okay? <coughs> and obviously, this assumption holds pretty well you know, we can easily justify it near the surface of the Earth, but it turns out that um, earthquake, earthquake focal data and other stuff can actually verify that this is true all the way down to the brittle ductile transition, like 20 kilometers down, for the most part, okay? So what this means is that the state of stress in the Earth can be fully characterized with only four things, okay? Because we know one of the directions is always down. All we need to know is one of the other directions, one of the other two. Right? If we know two of the directions, we know they're orthogonal, we can take a cross product to get the third one. Right? So all we have to know is one of the horizontal directions, and then the three principal stresses, which are S1, S2, S3. They are the eigenvalues of the stress tensor. Okay? So we only need four things to describe the state of stress in the Earth. The vertical stress magnitude, right? And again, that one's pretty easy to calculate. It's just the overburden pressure, one PSI per square foot, roughly. We need one of the horizontal uh, principal stresses. We typically call that SH max. So that's the maximum horizontal principal stress. SH min is the minimum horizontal principal stress. And one horizontal principal direction, usually the direction associated with SH max. Okay? But it doesn't really matter. If we know either one of them, we can find the other one. 